Good morning, and welcome to the Saturday Morning Breakfast Bible Study. I am Pastor Lydia Evelyn Spragan, and I currently pastor the New Destiny Christian Methodist Church located at 825 Lorenz Avenue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15220. Let us pray. Gracious Father, Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Anoint us from the very hairs on our heads and to the soles of our feet. And fill us, Lord, until we run it over. Send your Holy Spirit to teach us all that we need to know today and to lead us into truth and to empower us so that we live righteous lives that will give testimony to who you are and whose we are. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, here we are again. And I can only hope and pray that uh, you are going through this Bible study, which is a word study on faith. Now, I want to do a little bit of reviewing before I get to our actual lesson for today. There are some steps that we have already taken and we are we chose our word which was faith we've looked at several translations and we should have by now chosen at least two translations that we want to study from we have uh, gone to step three which is looking up the word faith in an English dictionary. And last week, we began to look at looking looking up the word faith in a Bible dictionary. Now, last week, I spent almost our entire time on a uh, the first paragraph in the Eastern Bible dictionary from which I was studying the word faith. Now, I want to read that definition again to you. Make sure you have it down. Okay? Faith is, in general, the persuasion of the mind that a certain statement is true. And then in parentheses, we have two Bible references. Philippians the first chapter, the 27th verse, and 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, the 13th verse. The definition then goes on to read, its primary idea is trust. A thing is true and therefore worthy of trust. It admits of many degrees up to full assurance of faith in accordance with the evidence on which it rests. Now, we spent quite a little bit of time last week going through Philippians 1 and 27 and Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13. And we looked in four different translations, the King James, or five, the, the King James Version, the New King James Version, the New American Standard Bible, the Amplified Bible, and uh, in some cases, the English Standard Version, to really understand what these verses were talking about. Now we are ready to do what I call synthesize. That is, put together 
what we have now learned about faith. Now, let me begin by saying what I learned about faith may not be what you learned about faith. This is what I put together. And I want you to go back, look at the definition, look at the the um, the, the, the uh, verses that we studied, and I want you to do what we have done here. Now, it took me about three to four hours to actually synthesize what I had learned about faith, okay? And it may take you longer. You may be able to put it together lickety-split. You see, when we study the Bible, we're, we are, number one, studying to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that can rightly divide the word of God. But we are also studying to show ourselves where we can show others what is the meaning of the word of God. So we're studying so that we can share with someone else. We come to the word to study the word. We learn the word. We we get ready to, to, to teach the word. We grow in the word. And then we get a chance to share it with somebody else. And there will always be an opportunity for you to share what you have learned with someone else. Okay? And note I keep saying share. Not argue with somebody else about what the word means. But share with them what you have gotten out of it. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do as we prepare to synthesize what we have learned is to pray. We want to pray that the Holy Spirit will come and that he will teach us. He will enlighten us as to the meaning of God's word. Now, what do I mean by enlighten us? as to the meaning of God's word. The Bible tells us who knows the mind of God like the spirit of God. And what we want to understand is the mind of God so that we can put the mind of God, lay aside our own mind, put the mind of God into our lifestyle, our 24-7 walk with God because that is the way we worship him in spirit and in truth you see worship doesn't just happen on Sunday worship happens every single minute of every single hour of every single day of every single week year after year after year we worship God now, so the way that I approach putting this together is first, I look at exactly what is it that the Bible dictionary told me, okay? Faith is, in general, the persuasion of the mind that a certain statement is true, its primary idea is trust, a thing is true and therefore worthy of trust. It admits of many degrees up to full assurance of faith in accordance with the evidence on which it rests. So the very first thing I want to do is kind of put that into my own words based upon the study that I have done on the two verses that it referred me to, Philippians 1, 27 and 2 uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13. So I want to write it down in a way that I understand it. Okay? So I write down, faith is in general the persuasion of the mind to lead my life in a manner that will be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Standing firm in one spirit with one mind, 
striving together with the spirit of God as if in combat. And then I wrote in parentheses, why? Because God has chosen you from the beginning for the salvation, for salvation through positional and practical sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth of word God, word God's word. Now, I went back and I put in next to positional in case I forget being set apart for God's purpose. And next to practical, I put growing in righteous living. So let me repeat that one more time so you can understand where my head reference was and where the Holy Spirit was leading me and how I understood faith. Now, I said me and I because you have to do your own work. To work out your own soul salvation. You have to come to an understanding of faith that you can write down. Now, I'm going to go a little further. Once you write it down, you have to be able to explain it. Okay? Now, this is my written understanding. Faith is in general the persuasion of the mind to lead my life in a manner that will be worthy of the gospel of Christ, standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving together with the spirit of God as if in combat. Why? Because God has chosen me from the beginning for salvation through positional, being set apart for God's purpose, and practical sanctification, growing in righteous living by the spirit and belief in the truth of God's word. Now that's rather lengthy. But it makes sense to me of what I have discovered in the Bible encyclopedia or the Bible dictionary. Now, once I have that written concept down, now I want to put that in my own words, something that is meaningful to me, something that I can apply to my life, something that will grab me, hold me, and strengthen me in faith. Putting it all together in my own words, faith is having my mind made up the full assurance being steadfast and unmovable, to live in a way together with the Spirit of God. By my side, as if in combat, that even though it has not happened yet, I believe in the truth of God's word, that whatever God has purposed for me will come to pass. Let me share that with you again. Faith is having my mind made up, the full assurance, steadfast, immovable, to live in a way together with the Spirit of God by my side as if in combat, that even though it has not happened yet, I believe in the truth of God's word that whatever God has purposed for me will come to pass. Whatever God has purposed for me will come to pass. Now, when I started to really study that and get into it, uh, the Holy Spirit, who was leading me in my study, because I had asked him to come in and teach me what he would have me to know. And to lead me into all truth. The Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance some other studies that I had already done. One, I had done a study on the Spirit of God. Now, if I'm going to work with or the Holy Spirit is going to work together with me, 
then I need to know who he is, what he is capable of, how he works with me, when he works with me, and why he works with me. And to that end, I had done a study a while back on the Holy Spirit. And I had studied John, the Gospel of John, chapters 14 through 16. And I was able to delineate approximately 50 things that the Holy Spirit does that will help me to live a righteous life and to uh, further my being closer to God today than I was on yesterday. Now, I know that some of you may not have conducted that study. So I'd like to condense it down to what the Holy Spirit brought back to my remembrance as I was studying this particular passage. Where I wrote, faith is having my mind made up. I had put in parentheses the full assurance, steadfast, immovable, close parentheses, to live in a way together with the Spirit of God. And I opened another parentheses. Now, the purpose of having parentheses or parenthetical uh, writings is to explain to you at a later date without you having to go back and do a whole lot of work what that particular statement or phrase or word meant to you at the time you were doing the study. So to live in a way together with the Spirit of God, I wrote down parentheses, my paraclete, my paraclete. And uh, the word parakletos, P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-O-S, is a Greek word. Now, I don't know Greek. I just use the background to get a deeper meaning of the word that I am studying. And usually, you can go to the internet, and you can look up a word, and it will tell you what the Greek is or what the Hebrew is. And what we do is we look at it, and I go, parakletos. The next thing I wrote down was a combination of para, beside, or alongside, and kaleen, to call. Now, my pronunciation may be somewhere off in the distance somewhere and way away from way, the way that Greek scholars will pronounce it. But I'm not concerned about the pronunciation as much as I'm concerned about getting an accurate meaning for the word Holy Spirit. So, para, P-A-R-A, beside, alone, or alongside. Beside slash alongside A L O N G S I D E and Kaleen or Kaleen K A L E I N, which means to call. Now, so he is the one who I can call alongside of me. I can call him to be beside me. So I want to live in a way together with the Spirit of God, who is my parakletos. I want to be able to call him to come along beside me or beside me and do what? Be my counselor my advocate, and my helper. 
And because I am a lawyer, the phrase that really struck out to me, it says, often used of one called to help in a law court. Counselor, advocate, helper. So now when I'm looking at the word faith, I have a made up mind, the full assurance, steadfast, immovable, to live my life in such a way only because I have called along beside me the Holy Spirit who will serve as a counselor, an advocate, or a helper as one who is in the court in the courtroom or the law court. I called him by my side as if in combat. As if in combat. Comrades in arms, we are together. As if in combat. Never leave a fallen brother behind. I mean combat with the Holy Spirit who I call to walk along beside me. So if if I was using my colored pencil, I would simply highlight or underline the word spirit of God. Maybe draw a circle around it. And 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 he's gonna be by my side. By my side. So, as if in combat. Now, so I pause there. Combat usually means war. You combat, if you are in combat, you're going off to fight in a war. Okay? Now, as I'm talking to you, <laughs> the Holy Spirit drops in my spirit. When you are in combat, you have put on the whole armor of God. So I'm going to write down here, in combat, and I'm going to make a little note over here, a little star, a little asterisk. And I'm going to say, combat. Having already put on the whole armor of God. Now, if if we wanted to really look at that, if I wanted to pause, I'd go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, and I would look at what does it mean to have on the whole armor of God. So I'm going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to go to Ephesians 6, and I'm going to start with verse 10, and I have my reading Bible here, not my study Bible, my reading Bible, Okay. This is a, a Bible that I love to read from, and it's easy for me to understand, and I don't have to work hard at it to understand it. And it's the New Century Version. And it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his great power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can fight against the devil's evil trick. Our fight is not against people on earth, but against the rulers and authorities and the powers of this world's darkness, against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly world. That is why you need to put on God's full armor. Then on the day of evil, you will be able to stand strong. And when you have finished the whole fight, you will still be standing. So stand strong with the belt of truth tied around your waist 
and the protection of right living on your chest, on your feet, wear the good news of peace to help you stand strong and also use the shield of faith with which you can stop all the burning arrows of the evil one. Accept God's salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times with all kinds of prayers asking for everything you need. To do this, you must always be ready and never give up. Always pray for God's people. Also pray for me that when I speak, God will give me words so that I can tell the secret of the good news without fear. I have been sent to preach this good news and I am doing that now. Here in prison, pray that when I preach the good news, I will speak without fear as I should. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That dropped a lot into my spirit. I don't know about your spirit, but my spirit is excited. So now when I talk about combat, on my side as if in combat, having already put on the whole armor of God. Speak to it, Lord. Hmm. All right, I'm going to shout here in a minute. Now, next to combat, what I wrote, again, in parentheses, because I'm fighting against something or someone. So in my parentheses, I wrote against Satan, who is referred to variously in the Bible as the adversary, the accuser, an enemy, an opponent, the devil, the serpent, and a dragon. And you remember back in the day we went over this, the names of Satan, okay? And if you just joined us and you want to review any of these lessons, you can feel free to go back to Facebook or you can go over to um, uh, YouTube and type in my name and... um, you will be able to find all of the Bible studies from the beginning there. So we learn that he's called, he's an adversary, an accuser, an enemy, an opponent, the devil, the serpent, and a dragon whose sole focus is to deceive, divide, and destroy God's people and defeat the purpose of God through lies, Deception, fear, doubt, and unbelief. Close parenthesis. So now I, I have a general understanding of what this combat is all about. I'm not fighting against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting against people. I'm fighting against Satan. And I'm unless the Holy Spirit comes along beside me comes along beside me and empowers me and helps me and becomes an advocate for me, a counselor for me that's why we have to walk with the Holy Spirit by our side. When we have, when we're talking about faith, we can't have faith without the Holy Spirit walking beside or with us. We have to be together. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Okay? And we have to agree in our mind. That we are going to uh, walk with the Spirit, obey the Holy Spirit, live as the Holy Spirit counsels, directs, guides, and leads us so that we can have a, a, a righteous life and be in right standing with God 
And I said that even though it hasn't happened yet, walking with the Holy Spirit every day, and I've been walking by faith and not by sight, that even though it hasn't happened yet, I believe in the truth of God's word. The truth of God's word. And that whatever God has purposed for me will come to pass. That's faith. That's faith. I understand that. I can't have faith without inviting the Holy Spirit to come alongside me Walk with me, empower me as if we are in combat because we are in combat against Satan and against everything that he can throw at us. And we want the Holy Spirit to be making a way for us. Faith says that I believe that no matter what happens, I'm going to stand on God's word and I'm going to wait for God to fix it so that even though I may have to struggle a little bit and have a little bit of comeback or a lot bit of comeback that eventually I know that God has my best interest in his heart. He knows the plans and the purposes that he has for my life. And so I'm going to let him fight my battle. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. We are in combat with the Holy Spirit alongside of us fighting as brothers in arms. To defeat the enemy so that God's purpose can be manifest in our lives. That's faith. Now, what I understand as faith and what you understand as faith, again, may not be the same thing. You are going to have to work with the word, work with the Holy Spirit to come to your own understanding of what is faith. Now, from now on, when fear arises and doubt arises and unbelief arises, uh, which, by the way, the greatest prayer in the Bible to me is, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. When those things come at me, when life comes at me fast, as the commercial said, I'm prepared because I have already put on the armor of God and the Holy Spirit is already beside me as if in combat. We are ready. We are ready. To defeat whatever the enemy has to throw at us so that God's purpose for me can be accomplished. I understand that. Now, we don't just study the word again, like I say, to to show ourselves approved under God. We study so that we learn and now. We have grown, and once we have grown, we want to share with somebody. So my next step in this whole application process is the evangelism focus. How can I apply what I have just learned about faith in such a way, using God's word, to a new babe in Christ. 
okay? Because first, what we're asking the new babe to do is to have faith. And most of the time, they don't really understand what that means yet. Have faith, okay? So I generally say, I'm asking you to have faith. Now, faith will not come overnight, but it will come. It will come in levels up to full assurance. If you have faith the grain of a mustard seed, you can say to yon mountain, be ye removed into the sea. Now, that may not be an exact quote. Okay. The essence is you don't need a whole mound of faith, I'm going to tell the baby. You only need a little bit. And a mustard seed is very small. But as you get to know who God is, and you continually have the Holy Spirit walking with you and teaching you and leading you into all truth, it will grow. It will grow. So I won't tell them your mind will be fixed so that no matter what happens, you will have a belief in God's word that nothing is impossible with God. I don't want to get too deep with it. It's a new baby. I want them to take that faith will grow. And as it grows, you will find that nothing is impossible with God. And then I'm going to, I want to plant their feet in the word. I always want to plant the new baby's feet in the word. So I'm going to say, let me give you two Bible verses that you can hold on to while you build your faith. And I'm going to pick two verses. And the two that I have chosen are Matthew 19 and 26 and Philippians 4 and 13. Matthew 19 and 26 says, With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. It might look really bad to you like it ain't going to really happen. But don't look at it that way. You are now with God. You have chosen to let God into your life. And because you are with God and God is with you, you are not alone and nothing is impossible with God. The second verse, Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me? And the new baby might say, who is him? Christ. Christ. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And one day, you want to make him your Lord. He can save you from all your sin, but what you really want him to do is become your Lord. Your master. Let him be the one who is sitting on your throne. Who is who is leading you and guiding you. Through the Holy Spirit. Which he left you. As a comforter. An advocate. A counselor. A helper. To come alongside of you. In times of trouble. When you feel like you got to fight. To get what you want or what you need. Know that you're not fighting alone. That the Holy Spirit is there to help you. He's come alongside of you. And you're going to hold on and keep the faith. Hold on to the Holy Spirit who's standing right next to you right now. And is available to you to help you. 
That's why David says in Psalm 34, 1, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is with me. I am not alone. And God is able. God is able to do what to man is the impossible. But to God, it's nothing. Nothing. He can handle it. No no matter how big your problem seems, God is bigger. So, just remember, I can do all things through him which strengthen me. Those are the ten words in the Bible that says everything. Who I can do. Look where you put the emphasis. No matter where you put the emphasis in those ten la- those ten words, there's power. I can. Do all things through Christ, him, who strengthens me. Ain't it wonderful? You share with the new babe? You're not by yourself. You don't have to enter combat and battle anymore by yourself. You got the Holy Spirit who's alongside of you. You got Christ living in you. You got God who is your father, your creator, who loved you enough to send his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die in your place. To die in your place as a substitute for all your hang-ups. He was hung up in order that you might live, have life, have life more abundantly, and have life eternal. And then you want to say something like, just keep your mind on the promises of the word of God and nothing else will matter. Remember last week I said mind over matter? Why? Because if you keep your mind on the promises of the word of God, nothing else will matter. And I want the the new babe to lay their head on that so they can rest. In God, not be troubled. I, 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 mind over matter, and then I say, may I, may I offer you some other help from the Word of God? Because what I want them to know is, listen, uh, the Bible is like prego sauce. Whatever you need is in there. And right now, I want you to be rooted and grounded so that you're not blown by every wind that come by, so that your faith is shaken and wobbly. I want you to be firmly planted on what is faith. So I'm going to tell the new baby, listen, Hebrews. 12 and 2 says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Now, some some versions might say, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Remember that you're growing. And Jesus is the beginning and the end of your faith. 
He's the Alpha and the Omega. Uh, he's the pioneer. And he's the perfecter. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. I'm gonna I'm gonna point the new baby to Hebrews three and one. Guard your heart and your mind by keeping your thoughts fixed on Jesus. Uh, fix your mind. The old, the older people, you say, I got my mind made up. Have your mind made up that you're going to stay the course and follow Jesus and obey Jesus no matter what happens. You're going to guard your heart and your mind by keeping your thoughts fixed on Jesus. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the new baby, fasten your mind to Jesus. In his word, find your peace. And they're going to say, I understand that. I said, let me, let me see if I can put it this way. I think the Bible puts it better than that. It says, Isaiah 26 and 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted. And I'm going to tell you, baby, every time you see this E-T-H at the end, that means keep on trusting. Trust him over and over and over again. Just keep on trusting in thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Peace that passeth all understanding, whose mind is stayed on thee. If your mind is fixed, made up, and stayed on Jesus the Christ <coughs> and what God can do for you, and knowing that nothing is impossible with God, you can't help but gain a little, a little faith, especially when you see it coming to pass. I got faith that he's going to wake me up this morning, and he did. I got faith that he's going to clothe me, and he did. I got faith that he's going to place me in my right mind, and he did. I got, I got faith. I have a persuaded mind, a mind that's made up that me, there ain't nothing going to separate me from the Holy Spirit who is walking alongside me as if in combat to help me, counsel me, and advocate for me as I go along the way. I'm going to tell the new babe to set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. And I'm going to have the new baby to turn to chapter 3 of Colossians. And it reads in the, in the King James Version. But most times people are familiar with the King James Version. And, and most of us like to hand out the King James Version. Uh, nothing wrong with the King James Version. But the new baby may not be able yet to understand. But anyway, you're going to give them a Bible. And if it's the King James Version, you're going to find. If ye then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. The, the new baby may not be able yet to grasp that. So, a lot of times, what I share with them 
is the international children's version. And it says, you were raised from death with Christ. I've already told them that the wages of sin is death. And now that they've accepted God, accepted Christ, accepted Jesus into their life, that they now have life eternal. They're not dead in their sins anymore. You were raised from death with Christ. So aim at what is in heaven, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Press toward the mark of the higher calling. Think only about the things in heaven, not the things on earth. Your old sinful self has died. And your new life is kept with Christ in God. Christ is your life. When he comes again, you will share in his glory. That's the International Children's Version of Colossians 3, 1 through 4. And so I want the new babe to know that they need to fix their eyes on Jesus. They need to guard their heart and mind. They need to fasten their mind to Jesus in his word and find their peace in his word. They need to, to set their mind on things that are above and not on things that are on the earth. And lastly, I want them to pray about things that you know that you will be facing that day and read a portion of God's word the Bible. And I'm going to say, you know why you do that every day? And I'm going to have them turn to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And it's going to read like this. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything. Every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your heart and your mind. In Christ Jesus is yours. And what are you, what are you to think about? I'm going to end up, what are you to think about? So that you, so that lies, deception, fear, doubt, and unbelief don't overtake you. Next verse says, finally, brother. Whatsoever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Man, I'm going to say to the new babe, can we please pray? together and I'm not going to try to be long and flowery and use a whole bunch of big words that the new baby doesn't understand it's going to be simple Lord help me Lord help me Fix my mind on you and walk with the Holy Spirit closer today 
that I did on yesterday. Amen. You see, a lot of us don't take the time to explain what faith is, how to walk in faith, why you need to keep the faith, uh, we don't explain that faith is not going to come overnight. So they think they ought to be a seasoned saint and have seasoned saint faith. They have new baby faith. They have to learn to crawl before they can walk. You have to learn to uh, stand up first. They have to learn to put one foot in front of the other. They got to gain some confidence in the ability of God. That when they fall, God not going to leave them in their fallen state. But he going to pick them up, clean them up, and put them back on the right path. They got to learn who God is so that their faith in him can grow. So what I did, as you know, I keep a digital journal of, of, of what it is, but I also print it out. So what I did was I printed everything out on one sheet of paper about faith. And let's just say that every time I get ready to talk to a new babe in Christ, that I'm going to talk to them about faith. Then I'm going to fold this sheet of paper up, and the Bible that I carry most often I'm going to stick in there so that even if I don't remember everything, I can pull this out and make copies. I can pull this out, go over it with the new babe in Christ, and then hand it to them to keep so they can have something to go by, something that we have read together study together, learn together, and we can walk together in as the new baby learns to stand up and gain confidence in standing on their faith enough to walk by faith and not by sight. It's a journey. And we who have uh, Christ within us, we're not going to get it right all the time. And we need, need to tell you, baby, sometimes might fall down. But don't stay down. You're walking with the Holy Spirit as if in combat. And he will never leave a brother behind. Ain't that great to know? I think it's great to know. Now, there is more of this study that we can do on faith. And there's another section that I want to get to because I want us to take Romans 10, 14 through 17 and kind of do the same thing um, that we've done in the context of Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance, the word of God, living in me so big that the things that God has purposed and planned for me, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the purpose and plans which God has for me. 
even though I don't see it yet. I know that with the Holy Spirit walking with me, as if in combat, we cannot be defeated. For the battle is not ours. It's not mine. It's the Lord. Ain't that just great? Ain't that just great? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the time that you have allowed us to spend in your word. We thank you, Father God, for sending the Holy Spirit to come and teach us what you would have us to know. And now, Father God, help us to apply what we have learned to our lives. So that we can be a living witness of what faith looks like in action. So that when somebody comes to us and say, why ain't you scared? Why are you not afraid? Why don't you doubt that? I can say with full confidence, full assurance. Because I have faith. I have faith in God. And with God, all things are possible. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. Um, I pray that you have received uh, something that can be beneficial to you, and that as you go back and do your own individual study and struggle with this word, that you will come to an understanding of faith that you can live by and that you can share with someone else so that they can grow and you can grow in the word of God and that you can uh, be able to lead them to their own walk with God. And y'all can walk together. Agree on who God is. And what faith in God means. To each of you and collectively. Remember, God really does love you. And so do I. See you all next Saturday. Same time. Love you. <laughs>